Chad Beckham here, got another experiment. I got a piece of persimmon, it was cut two days ago, and I split it out and roughed it out into a bow form stave that's barely flexing. I got it on my form clamp, back set about two inches. But the reason I'm doing this is I want to see if I can force dry persimmon. I don't take, I didn't learn not to take other people's word for, oh, this is absolute law. But I found out, eh, maybe not. You know, um, we did a lot of things that were said by many people that couldn't be done. That, you know, if it fails, it fails. I learned something either way. I got a little quickie set up over here. I got my bow up about uh, 40 inches. I'm going to have a bed of charcoal, light it, let it burn down a little bit, drape a tarp over it. And I'm not trying to fire harden this wood. I'm just trying to dry it. And then I'll fire harden it. But I want to dry it first without any checks, just to see if it can be done seen a lot of things online where people said, oh no, you can't do persimmon that way. Well, they said the same thing about hickory. They said the same thing about uh, white oak. I forced dried a piece of sweet gum the other day. No cracks. It's just a technique that you use. And, you know, how you apply those techniques to the wood. So, yeah, taking other people's word as fact I didn't learn not to do that. But let's get on our experiment. I'll show you my setup. Okay, it's been a while back, but me and Keith did a video called the 12 hour bow. We cut a green tree down, and in 12 hours I was shooting. Had back legs, shot really fast. Go check the video out. Um, 12 hour bow from green tree finished bow in 12 hours but we used a method kind of like this to dry the wood now I'm not trying to make a bow in 12 hours today I'm just gonna dry it I want to see this is a different species of wood so I want to see if I can force dry it fast dry it without any checks or cracks or things like that so uh, really hanging up over the bed of coals. I'm just going to light them, let it burn down as long as it takes. And I'll check the moisture now, and we'll check the moisture after. And if successful, if everything goes good, I will fire hard this over the same pit later. But I got a couple more bows I'm working on. I don't want to get them done, but I wanted to see if I could force dry this piece of wood while I had a green piece of wood. Believe it or not, the insurance company come out to my house and said, that tree must go. And uh, it was a persimmon tree leaning over, my, leaning over my roof, and it is hurricane season. So, really hot out here, a lot of humidity. But let's see this little smoky oven can cure the wetness out of my wood without giving the wood any kind of problems. Now I got it clamped down on the form and that's to keep it from twisting. It had a little twist in it already, but nothing major. Got 16 pounds of charcoal. later I will. Just maybe some hardwood and stuff once this gets going. Let's check the moisture. Okay, hope you can see this. I just got a reading of about 22. Oh, this fell out. Okay. Yep, I got 22. I don't know if you can see that, but I have to. It's in the sun. It's hard to see, but 22%. So, it's dried out a good deal since I thinned it down. And I just thinned it down last night and I let it sit on this form overnight. So it dried some. I threw the 
this makeshift thing together, but it's pretty sturdy. I think if the wind got up or something, it wouldn't be a problem. You light my coals, let them ash over, spread them out, and I got it way up too high to fire hardy, so we, you know, it's all about drying. So let's try it. I'm in this to find out myself, mainly, but I might as well film and share it with you, so here we are. that soak in a second. You know, I done learned to quit taking people's advice. I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but I know a lot of people just regurgitate what they heard. I guess we've all done it to a certain extent. And, um, yeah, this is primitive bow myth busters, I guess is what this is. There's a lot of dogma, a lot of myth out there about archery. And wow, it seems really hard to get anybody to think outside the box of what's been written and what's been told over and over and over and over. So yeah, find out yourself, best way to do it. stuff I wanted to do as far as bow and arrows and primitive skills and now I'm able to do it so expect videos coming on a regular basis now I do it because I enjoy it and I learn myself by experimenting so the way it is some time right now waiting on the uh, bow to dry starting napping a few points this is some of our local uh, Brow Creek or Middle Savannah River Church agate this is pinkish been heat treated this is unheat treated non heat treated and it's more like an agate it may be Savannah River agate that piece has been heat treated, but not chipped. It's still got the patina on it from being heated. Uh, Brow Creek can get red. It can get brown. It can get blue. Uh, I've seen it bone white. And this one is uh, unheated. You see the banding in it. It's just our local stuff. and. Uh, I've been over there playing around with chipping a few bird, bird points while I'm waiting on my fire. Yeah, this stuff is really nice. Really beautiful stuff. Kind of a Cahokia Mound 72. My version anyway but this is unheated Savannah River agate Briar Creek Church it's all found there in the same area the persimmon stave still in the uh, in the smoking pit so uh, it's been in there I guess about three hours I'll just pull it out later tonight still a good bit of heat in there. I'm just going to let everything die down and pull it out. We'll see. We'll go from there. I know it dried a lot. Most of the clamps fell off. They got really loose. It just fell on the ground. I see no cracks. No problems. Let's check. 
check it. You should be able to see it. I'll zoom in so you can see it. I got 6% right there. 6% Wow So this thing, this persimmon tree was living two days ago And now I got it Dry down to 6% I could go ahead and file harden this if I wanted to But I didn't intend on doing that today I just wanted to, uh, the uh, clamps are just falling off. I didn't plan on file hardening this today. I just wanted to see if I could dry this persimmon down, you know, force dry it, fast dry it without any problems. But I will go ahead and uh, file harden it later, maybe tomorrow or something. I just. I wasn't concerned with that today. I was just really concerned with could I fast dry persimmon? Could I force dry persimmon? The more I see of this and the things I've read in the past, it just doesn't doesn't add up. Let me see if I can get this. You see it six? I have no checks, no cracks, nothing. A few hours over the fire, I had it up about 37 inches above the fire. And what I was really wanting to do is to see if I could dry it down to 10% at least, you know, without any checks or cracks or anything. A lot of people make bows at 10%, which I don't like to, but especially our white boys. I like to drive them on down. I just don't understand. Uh, wow. I mean, let's, uh, let's dry wood for 25 years and maybe there's some species out there that uh, really have problems with uh, drying, uh, you know, fast drying, but these white woods don't. I mean, you can zap them down in a matter of hours. If I would have done this early this morning, I could have refired the fire and got it hot again and dropped it on down and fire hardened the belly. And right now, this thing would have been ready to tiller. And I split this out of the wet tree yesterday. And the tree guys come to my house and cut the tree down. It was leaning over my house, it was a persimmon. And they cut it down the day before yesterday. It laid on the ground in log form with the bark on it uh, overnight. I went back yesterday and I split it. And I come home and I roughed out this little depot stake. It's about 63 inches, uh, maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and a half wide. But all that's in, you know, that doesn't matter. What matters is that I force dried this piece of wood without any kind of problems. Uh, yeah, crazy. I could have left it on the fire a little while longer, but there was no need. I got to where I wanted to be. Five heart and myth busters. There we go. Dried this thing down in a few hours to 6% uh, on the belly, 10% on the back. Really didn't hard dry it. It was up 37 inches above the coals and I had a thin layer of coals out. I put uh, 16 pounds of coals, but that stretched out for uh, seven feet and about uh, 16 inches wide. So yeah, and I kind of let them coals even out with you know ash out evenly before I put the bow on there and I took it off they would still heat on the coals so I could have left this thing but complete success by hard myth busters strikes again <laughs> okay um, I 
did a little research on some of the bow forums and you know I see stuff like uh, yeah persimmons good bow wood the next guy saying oh it's terrible the next guy saying oh if you if you split it you had better leave the bark on it coat the ends leave the bark on it and uh, another guy was saying put a suit on it with the tie you know until it's dry like 25 years I'm exaggerating but anyway uh, man I am completely sure that the Aboriginal people of the southeastern United States made a bow when they wanted to make a bow. Green living tree two days ago, not hickory, persimmon. Now it's down to 10%, 6%. Now I'm going to fire harden it next. Please like and subscribe to my channel and share my videos. And if you want to know more about the file hardened bow technique, go to Shannon Outdoors and check out the art and science of the file hardened white wood bow. So, our next step. Thank you. See you later.